Mr. Budi Suhardi. Good morning, everyone. Selamat pagi. Good morning. Ni hao. Ayo ngan seyo. Bongshu. Actually, I don't know what to say. Uh, I haven't prepared anything except maybe I have to warn you first that you have to be careful on watching television program. It can change your life. What happened was in... Uh, 1999, things were started of what now called Rosin Orphanage. Rosin Orphanage was formed without any plans, without having any desire, and without having any knowledge about how, to shoot, how we should run an orphanage. Yes, now, we are having 147 children, uh, youngest uh, three months old, the oldest uh, 26 years old, uh, which already finished medical school, 11 uh, children in university, and the rest are yeah, growing up together. But once again, be careful in watching television program. 1999, my wife and I, and the three children, and uh, one helper, in Singapore, living at a, well, a very safe, nice, comfortable place. And we were having a special dinner. Why? On the evening, we were planning to remember our good times when we were living in Seoul, Korea. That time, I was flying for Korean Airlines. As a background, I'm a, as you know, I'm a pilot and uh, for 39 years, flying Garuda, Korean Airlines, and the last one is the Singapore Airlines. While having a dinner as well, we were planning to plan our trips to travel around the world 33 days. So it's special evening, special meal, with a plan to travel around the world with family. But while we were having our dinner, we saw a television program, which Indonesian television program, broadcasting about the conditions of uh, people who are living at the refugee camps in uh, at the border between Indonesia and uh, East Timor. They were the East Timor refugees. Here we are at home, special chosen, the best meal that you can think of and the other side of the world, people who are very living, miserable living, survival kind of condition. So it uh, hits us very, very badly. Uh, my wife and I, we, we really got hit hard with that. Especially when we... Um, we saw a family of, I can't remember, eight or ten of them uh, sharing one instant noodle cooked in a, an, an, an empty paint can, um, put a lot of water in it, and they, they put in uh, veggies that they can find around the place where they're living, of which between trees, with uh, plastic uh, ropes, with plastic seats, and carton boxes to sleep. Here we are at home, nice meals, nice comfortable home, safe and clean. That's the unfairness, draw our attention. My wife and I, we asking each other, honey, we are going for holiday, right? Yes, of course. It's family time. Then it's my turn later on. Honey, we're going, right, for the holiday? Yeah, yes. <laughs> then we know that we got affected by that. It's 
the scene. And finally, we brought them into prayers. And at 11 o'clock at night, we decided we uh, commit to go. Instead of going for holiday, we will visit the, the refugee camps. Be careful on watching television. <laughs> so that's the end of the evening. We plan to go to the refugee camps for a change. At 11 o'clock, I wrote an, an email to friends who might you know, want to participate or coming along on the trip. From 11 o'clock until 4 a.m., I wrote one page. Because I do not know what to do, how to get there, and what to, what to bring, and how to help. Nothing. By 6 a.m., actually, I have a few thousands already sent, committed by my friend from Perth, Indonesian who living in Perth. Would you consider yourself have so-and-so $1,000 for you to spend? On that trip, I commit myself to bring uh, 10,000 US dollars to spend, and anything I can uh, think of to bring, especially for the children, maximum 500 kilograms. 500 kilograms, uh, the overweight baggage is already something. But God decides uh, differently. When we are supposed to go for the trip, actually, in my house, from friends, from uh, the work, from uh, tennis courts, from uh, the churches, from any box of life. They give me so many things, end up 987 kilograms already. 13 kilograms less than one ton. Then comes the headache. How can I bring this across? You know, at least 1,000 miles away, when, uh, not a direct flight, not direct journey, I must be, you know, transit somewhere. Three days before the departure, I still knows nothing about how to, to do it. And one friend, actually, after our uh, a gathering, uh, asked me, Buddy, when are you going? In three days' time, as planned. But I do not know how to get there, how to bring things across, still. Why don't you call Alex, Buddy? Who is Alex? Never heard the name, never knew the, the gentleman, and oh, there's a number. And actually, Alex was a uh, station manager of Singapore Airlines in Changi Airport at that time. Alex Chi. He's from, uh, originally from Malacca, actually. Chi Teng Hyang, maybe some of you know the Chi family. It's the oldest, uh, some sort of family in Malacca. So I call him, nothing to lose. My name is so and so. Me, my wife, my family, we are planning to go to visit the refugee, uh, refugees to give things to be distributed for free. So confirm you want to go there, you and your family bringing things to be distributed for free. Yes, please wait. Only about an hour, uh, a minute or two later, again. okay, proceed as planned. Excuse me, the reason I'm calling you is I'm, I thought that I'm, you know, I'm an employee, uh, so I kept, uh, gave a, dis a special discount, you know, uh, conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> so, sir, the reason I'm calling you, I'm asking a special consideration, maybe the company can give me a discount. So, uh, yes, uh, proceed as planned. Wow, maybe, oh, I got it, you know. Uh, okay, on the D-Day itself, when we are departing from the airport, not only so many friends came to my apartment, from a 13th floor apartment, even my bosses with tie and suit helped to carry the stuff, you know? And one amazing guy, he's uh, from, uh, from Kuching. His name is uh, maybe some, you know, his name is Captain Wong, Wong Ke, Wong and Cap. I told him, that time he's, I considered him old. That time he was 59 plus, which is my, my age now. <laughs> Sir, please. Don't carry things which is too heavy for you. You know his answer? Buddy, I'm not doing it for you, no? I'm doing it for God. So don't stop me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Please continue. At the airport, the station manager, 
not only helping me to set things, uh, to set up things, but he's also preparing the porters, at least 12 of them. When I came to the airport with the goods, you know, hey, Captain Zuari, good morning. We're ready to help. Oh, thank you. So they are helping me to weigh the items and do tag, tag, tag bagging, uh, tagging. All went in. I have a total of $57,000 on my hand from friends, adding up to what I'm committed to. And then I've come to counter. Uh, what is damage? Eh? What is the damage? Eh? How much eh? I have to pay for the overweight? Eh? And you answer, it's done. Excuse me, what do you mean? It's free. Wow, you know, free of charge, me and my family with check in luggage of one ton. The goods that we have is from that wall to that wall and longer, at least three times. And it's done. Off we went to the throne to Jakarta first. 1999 in Jakarta. Having so much luggage and you have to deal with the custom. <laughs> not easy. You know, not easy. Uh, there's, a, there's an economical crisis at that time. Well, I have the confidence that if I must pay, I have the money, I'll pay for it. The commitment is just do it. Just do it. When you arrived in Jakarta, went straight to the customer officer, office, met the duty uh, manager. Sir, me, so-and-so, me and my family, we are bringing a lot of goods to be distributed for free to people who are in the need, living in the refugee camps. The customer officer looked us up and down, up and down, very uncomfortably to be seen like that. And finally, this customer officer asked his assistants, come, please escort this gentleman and the family and their goods until things are done. That's what he said. And that's what happened. Check-in luggage of one ton being escorted by custom officer until everything out without a single bag being opened that can happen because God is with us. In Jakarta, with lots of money, we went shopping. Especially goods which is useful for the little ones, who are the innocents, who are must enduring the kind of life at the camps. And we are shopping like mad. From one ton, we end up about eight tons. <laughs> Original plan, 500 kilograms, remember? OK, then comes the headache. Because at that time, in Indonesian transportation, uh, airlines are limited to Garuda, Merpati, Pelita, Mandala, and uh, Burak Airlines. And only Garuda has a jet engine. Very difficult. Cargo space is very difficult, very expensive as well. And during that time as well, goods going towards eastern part of Indonesia usually are backlogging in, in, on ports. To send goods from Jakarta to reach Iran Jaya, eastern part of Indonesia, can be at least one and a half months. And on that time, we are only having, the moment I arrive in Jakarta to go there and back is uh, seven days a week. And they offer me, yes, I'll give you special discount. Six weeks. I only have one week. Six weeks cannot, I have to go back and fly again to do my job. Then I, on the third day after trying my best, I give up. I told my wife, honey, we are so tired, let's take today as a day off to us of arranging things. So we committed to that day just to give, off, to give up, to trying. Let's clean up the house, because we have left the house for nine years. 
while we are living in Korea. So while uh, my, my, my wife is in charge of cleaning in the house, uh, the other parts of the house, except uh, I clean up my, my office. Inside my office, I, I uh, found my old flying bag. Inside my flying bag, there's uh, uh, old uh, sorry, phone books. That time, no smartphone. Yeah. <laughs> Not existed yet. Inside my notebook, which is phone books, uh, is a phone, call, uh, phone number of my friend who uh, is uh, still flying for Garuda, a pilot live, uh, from Jogja. He happened to be dark skin, so I call him. Hey, Item. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Jaina. He's a captain on Airbus 330 now. Anyway, so we uh, exchange, say hi, exchange news, and then finally he asked me, hey, Hey, what, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm, me and my family, I'm trying to bring something for the refugees, uh, things that we want to distribute it for free for them. But I have difficulties on how to bring them across. You know? Oh, why are you worry? Why don't you call Uncle Harry? Uncle Harry? Who is Uncle Harry? Never heard of his name and knew the gentleman. So he gave me the number. Mr. Harry, or Captain Harry Hilliard, was uh, a, a captain, ship captain for the Indonesian biggest uh, shipping liner called Pelni. So I call him. Nothing to lose again. My name is so and so. Want to go there to distribute things for the people who are in the need for free. He repeat that and then wait for a while. Only less than three minutes, he came back to me. Okay, uh, when do you want to go? Oh, I'm going to 14 that time. The date is 14. Okay. Uh, who are going? Uh, me, my wife, my family. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's your name? With my name. When I told him my wife's name, family name is just Lakusa. Okay. Oh, which Lakusa is this? Who's the father? Oh, Cornelius. Oh, where is he? Oh, do you know him? Oh, it's my classmate, uh, my uh, childhood friend. Oh, okay. Stop calling me uncle or sir. Uh, so calling me Mister or Captain. Call me uncle now. Oh, yes, Om. Yes, uncle. <laughs> At the end of the conversation, actually, he booked for me first class cabin on the uh, shipping liner. And he gave me two choices. One, you can bring things, anything you want to bring, up to 10 tons. Or, second one, bring anything up to 15 tons for free. So again, this is God's blessing on me. Then off we go. On the actual day, we went to, from uh, Jakarta, Surabaya, 22 hours by ship. Surabaya to Bali, 17 hours. And Bali to Kupang port, uh, 28 and a half hours. Miracles. When we were in uh, Surabaya, during transit, we saw Indonesian army who are from uh, Papua, West Papua, uh, West Papua, or West Papua, uh, yeah, Irian Jaya at that time, call it. They are on the way back from uh, peacekeeping duty force in Aceh and using the ship. So while they're transiting in uh, Surabaya port, I saw them eating a bowl of meatball soup or whatever the food they have, sharing one person. Uh, one ball for three person. That's just strange, you know. It's big guy, muscle guy, adults sharing one for three person. Then oh, I must just hey, you must be very close family or you know very close buddy. You know? No sir, no money. Oh, yeah. breaks my heart. So hey, stop doing that. Please eat one person one ball. If you need more, eat more. I'll pay for it. Am I a good person? <laughs> Things repeated, repeated in Bali. But before they start doing it, I thought, hey, remember, one person, one bowl. If you need more, eat more, I will pay for it. Am I a good person? Yes. No. Can you imagine when you arrive at the destination at uh, Kupang port, you have 
44 army officers in uniform shouting, make a way, make a way, and then bringing our goods for free. Incredible. I have 44 porters right away, you know, and refuse payment. So who, is, who wants to against uh, army officers? You know? No one. You know? So that's a blessing. That Just do things what is appropriate to your eyes, to human. Then the, inst- the reward is instant. I'm not asking for reward, but, you know, it's just like that. Then in Kupang, we did our final mad shopping kind of uh, activities. We shop. Uh, in common word, is shop till you drop, right? <laughs> but over there, we shop until we have no energy. We do not know what to shop anymore. So at the end of the day, with a, after three days of preparation and shopping, we end up ready in two big trucks, eight-wheeler trucks, two uh, MPV's car, prepared to be distributed. Not 500 kilograms, not 10 tons, but more than 40 tons. <laughs> then off we go. I, there's no GPS. I never been there before. I knew no one there, but we committed to go with a map which is expired for I don't know how many years. With commitment, go there, and if we found, because there are predominantly uh, Catholics there, so if we f- can find a Catholic church or seminary, whatever, the first one we see, we will ask for help. That's what we did. We went, we went there, when we are near the town of uh, Atambua, we uh, uh, stopped at the seminary and asked for help. Three pastors came forward and, okay, we'll take you there. When we are arriving at the camps, it's not easy to give. It's not right away accepted. And then people kind of having curiosity about what that we are going to give and what, uh, uh, and, and maybe a poison. This, the situation is still not so good that time. You know, the first question after dealing that, first question, which party are you from? <laughs> uh, oh, which party? Okay. We are coming from Woody and Peggy's party. My name is Woody, my name is Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, finally we break the, you know, uh, we saw the deal and then we arrange this, then we start distribution. Six lines were formed. Myself, my wife, my kids, three kids. That time my son was not even four years old. Uh, and a helper, and also we, I have one, one volunteer from UK, uh, from, uh, from Luton, UK. Six lines we distributed simultaneously from 2 p.m. until 8 p.m. without stopping. And after 8 p.m., at 8 p.m., I feel that I'm done. I'm, I have no more energy. After 12 days without sleep, so I just cannot have it. Then I told the, the pastors, Pastor, I have enough uh, of it. And uh, I cannot do anymore. I'm too tired. We are too tired. Even though my little one, uh, not even four years old one, was still very actively distributing. <laughs> but for me, I just, I hate it. You know? Then um, we went back to the, uh, the seminary. We dropped everything. Oh. Before we left the place, you know, I don't know if it sounds ridiculous or, no, or what, but this is what I experienced there. The first, even the first truck, as if the goods is still there. You know. Six hours distribution, and the goods still there. It's like we multiplied. Off we went to. The seminary, we offload everything. We conquered, we occupied all the rooms, all the, uh, what do you call it, the walkways, and then we sat back to Kupang. On the way back to Kupang, 
one and a half hour after. Oh, I, I forgot time, time, something else. Before we, we left Kupang to the, the camp, we were being helped by 25 volunteers who want to come with us. But on the way, one hour when we left Kupang on departure, one by one, oh, I want to pee. Oh, I want to have a big one. I want to pee. But within one hour, it stopped about 15 times. So I stopped them. Hey, tell me the truth. What do you mean? Oh, sir, um, actually, we want to help. Oh, we want to do things for other people as well. But I've, we've seen the on television, on the news, newspaper, that the place that you're going, actually, where the militia killing is happening. So I think it's better for us not to come. So yeah, finally, none of them are coming with us. So it left us, family, and, and uh, two drivers. Okay, coming back then. One half hour after re on the returning trip, one of the trucks stopped. No more fuel. In the, in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., and pitch black. And that's a place where it's being broadcasted as a village where the militia killing is happening. We are sitting dark. I'm ready with whatever I have. If somebody asks me money, don't harm my family, just give money, we're happy. But God with us said nothing happening to us. And in fact, somebody was sent by him. One truck driver, many cars passing by, but don't dare even to reduce the speed. But one truck driver on his own, driving a truck, stopping and first question, hey, what are you doing? Oh, the car stops, no fuel. Oh, do you have any hose? Yeah, we have. Get the fuel from mice. So, got the fuel from the truck, the truck driver. And amazingly, in the middle of the night, truck driver who doesn't earn so much refused any payment. So, it's amazing. Then we continue the journey. Arrive in uh, Kupang. We only have uh, 15 minutes. Wash my face pack the bags, and we head back to the airport. And we are the last passenger. And inside the plane, even though the plane was, you know, with the propeller, felt like paradise. <laughs> because we have been <laughs> not sleeping and standing, even driving a car and driving trucks, you know. So we, off we went to Bali, and from Bali, even more than paradise, because we are using Garuda business class DC-10. And the first time I did my revenge there with my wife, I uh, arrived in Jakarta, my home in Jakarta. We have a hot chocolate, and we slept for 18 hours non-stop. <laughs> Until when we woke up, we do not know what day, what time, and where we, <laughs> where we are. Anyway, that was our first trip. We did a similar trip a few times. Then we asked ourselves, do we do justice? Do we uh, uh, do things which is significant? Bringing food, bringing clothes, bringing things of which is perishable to a place where people do not have a good place to stay, they don't have clean water whatsoever. Food may be lasting three, four days, maybe a week, canned food maybe. Clothing maybe one month, after one month become wrecks because they don't have any water. So nothing significant. Then we scratch our head again, hey, what can be done? Me and my wife said, yeah, what can be done? Just we like hit and run, you know. Okay. How about looking after the little one? Yeah, but how? You have give them a home. How? We are living in Singapore. Who's going to manage there? How about an orphanage? Do we have no skill. We know nothing about early child education. We know nothing about how to become a manager for an orphanage. But uh, yes, we, 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 okay, give it a try. So we went there, we rent a house, fill up with very, four very miserable children. We hired six girls to look after three shifts for the, for the little ones. Well, my wife is there. From four to six to eight to 10. When at the 10, two must, Two were, were taken away by other people. Why? Because some people spreading rumors that 
Budi and Peggy are able to live in Singapore because they are selling babies. <laughs> yeah, it's very sad. Then, but we have more children, more children until at the point where, hey, this kind of place is not enough. So we, we decided to have our own place. And that time, we remember, back eight years ago, actually, we purchased a land in Kupang, in Timor, without seeing it or without knowing where the place was. Because we as a family um, needing some help on, on doing an operation to the daughter whom actually the food went into the boiling zap of uh, Gula Melaka. Yeah, the food become like uh, duck food, duck feet. Then uh, they, want, they need a place to stay in Jakarta. So that's why they stay at our place. Then um, they bought seven million rupiah. That time is quite a lot. But the, actually, the medical uh, fee is 13 million. So we commit to top up. Okay, fine. After 31 days staying with us and all the operations, everything's done. Uh, on one evening, the family asking us to talk after dinner. So after dinner, spoke to me, of course, thank us, you know, thank you for letting us to stay here for 31 days. Thank you for top up our medical fee. And but is it possible for you to help us one more? Oh, yes, it's more than happy to do it if I within our means, you know. So can you buy us a second-hand Kijang? Kijang is a car, MPV. Asking for me to buy a car? <sighs> so, it's, so I'm a salary man, you know. But my wife pulled me in to the room and then, honey, uh, they're asking second hand, you know. Okay, fine. So we bought them a second hand car for them to do business to help the his on their communities on selling handicrafts because in profession they're using motorcycle. So, okay, fine. So we bought the, bought the car. We fixed the car before setting off, sending them off. And we give fuel, money fuel, uh, give money for the car tra transported by ship. And before they left our house, they asked my wife, hey, can I have your address, please? Uh, so uh, if I arrive there, I can send you a uh, mail that we're arriving safely. Oh, sure. At that time, uh, my wife and I just finished. Uh, we, at that time, we bought an apartment and uh, land. So we have a copy of the ID card. So here's my ID card. Uh, my name's here and my address here. Everything's there. So they left, returned to Kupang. Three months later, arriving on an envelope, A4 size, on the mail, is a land certificate on my wife's name. Wow, this is false, false, uh, false purchase. No? So, we were <laughs> so we went to Kupang. We asked for the market price there, and we paid in full without seeing the land. Only 2001, we found out that, hey, we have land, you know. So we looked for it, and it was discouraging. The place to get there is, the road is, you know, even motorcycle, you have to step up. You have to. <laughs> but, you know what? There is a land where the openings is. So God prepared it eight years ago before we need it. As mentioned earlier, the place established without any plan. And officially opened by the governor at that time. This is our vision mission. We uh, cannot have fancy words, uh, keeping uh, sweet and short, to empower the rest of the children and often through education. Education is the key. Whatever it is, it's the best uh, that you can bring off. We live like uh, just as family. Yeah, and uh, we always trying our, uh, ourselves to be at their levels, to to be, you know, uh, where actually we can bring up or go up together. It's not like I'm the big boss. Hey, don't ever do that to children. We have to go down to their levels, and everything will be fantastic. Anytime you want to go, please. Anytime is a good time. 
This is when they came to us. Babies. And oh, can you imagine when we started, we have uh, 14 babies in the morning. What does it feel? How to do it? To give birth to 14 babies at once. <laughs> We've done it. We can do it. can be done by you as well. Most of the children came to us, sadly, until now, because the mother passed away on childbirth. Reason being, the infant mortality rate is very high there, until now. Maybe in Indonesia, it's the highest infant mortality is in Timor. Why? Because simply, Timor is very poor of water. The number of rainfall every year, if you're lucky, three months. If the rainfall yearly, less than three months, I can guarantee you, I can bring you to a family where it's actually experiencing famine, even though in the tropics. Why famine? Not enough water, they cannot plant anything. Nothing can grow. Why? Because the, the whole island is actually raised uh, seabed. So coral protruding right to the top of the layer of the soil. How can you plant that? We always keeping ourselves as a family, doing things together, and you know, uh, there's no need for us to have a so-called uh, fancy gadgets to be happy. You know, with a small one piece of paper of one stone of one used balls, we can create quality time with them. So if any of you wants to come to our place, don't ask me, Woody, what can I bring for them? Or oh, expensive toys, forget it. Just bring your, as much as possible, tons of love and patience dealing with the children. This is quite common. Malnourished, severe malnourished children. And in this instance, actually, my wife was the one helping the delivery of this baby. After giving, uh, I think, five bottles of drips, then we brought her to Jakarta, this is in Timor, and then we brought them to Jakarta uh, ICU for quite a long time. And this is the girls now, grew healthily. Again, the most precious time that you can give to your children is your precious time, please. That's what your children need to do at home. Share knowledge, share the ups and downs, share whatever you can, you know, one thing I can show you, you come to my orphanage, um, don't expect to see uh, sad children. We will have no sad children. All are bubbly and happy. And to young mothers or people who are not married yet, especially ladies, don't be scared on looking after babies. Babies are naturally very talented and they're clever. I can show you like this one, or the picture in this one. Actually, you can place a baby as such, place the water, um, uh, milk bottle as such. They can finish it by themselves without choking guarantee. <laughs> Come to my place, I'll show you how. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine when we have 14 babies? That's our routine. And again, babies are naturally a very kind person. We just nurture it, keep it that way and they will become fine individuals. Ah, this one is interesting. It's quite common in our place, two year old, they can be on their own. And this one, even 18 months, this, I, I have to call him doctor, uh, because this baby actually changed somebody's life. The husband and wife from Singapore at that time, they are kind person, they want to do volunteering jobs, they want to volunteer, they want to help other people, came to me, Woody, I want to volunteer, I want to do this and that, but please, don't get us to do anything with children. <laughs> uh, okay, 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 sure. And they even refused for me uh, to bring them for outing, for dinner, special dinner, no, or such thing, no. Woody, I'm coming here to work. Don't send me or bring me for a special treat. If I'm coming here for a holiday, I will, but this time, no. So that's what they did. 
Husband and wife, volunteering, even making some men, uh, we uh, involved them on uh, making lay the foundation of the, our, uh, the boys' dorm that time. Our farming as well. Wake up in the morning, working right through, you know, the days right through until the end of the evening as well. And one day, they uh, felt the hot, the heat, uh, the, the, the day was too hot, you know. So, take a rest and took a shower. After shower, accidentally, they drawn to a noise of other children. And while they are going to see that, that particular noise uh, from, they saw Cornelius. And then, hey, look at him. Eh? Pretty? Is, is he okay? Yeah, okay. Why? How old is he, buddy? 18 months. He is eating on his own? Yes. Wow. Okay. So, why he's asking that? Why is they avoiding the, to be dealing with children? Because in life, that's for, for what they, he, they told me, that all the nephew nieces are brats. <laughs> and then they happen to have the idea since the beginning, so the couple is not willing to have any children. But through Cornelius, actually the, boy, the, the couple actually wanted to have uh, children on their own, but it's a bit too late, they are in the 50s already. So, <laughs> but at least he changed uh, the way of thinking of that, that person. You know? We share everything, day-to-day -day activities, and we uh, encourage them to participate on whatever we are doing without asking them. So, this on this instance, uh, they're doing things, pick up the brooms, one pick up the brooms, and the other one, hey, hey, me, 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 doing it on their own. So, uh, even though on this picture, actually, I was criticized by someone from uh, UK. And I, Buddy, that's child labor, you know? <laughs> no, they are playing, you know? <laughs> so, you know? Yeah, big and small, we do it together as family. We share the day-to-day -day activities. And um, you come, if you come now, I can give you mangoes, which is plenty at the moment. Yeah. For a lady, I think one is enough. <laughs> this is our banana, our own banana as well. Okay. Um, it's a home for everybody. It's a home. We're trying to make it a home. You know the difference between a house and a home, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's porous province simply because of the water. This is uh, taken a few years back, and this is an actual classroom that we saw last time. We already make, uh, every month I send uh, 10 meters of tiles and a few bags of cement, and this classroom actually is done already. But some places in the remote areas are still like this and needed uh, you know, some help. This is a very modern uh, classroom. Why? Because it has uh, aircon here. <laughs> water for us, just put the tap on, then we get water. Over there, it's, it's a precious time. Water is a very precious thing. Even during the rainy season, not that easy to find water. Some must walk miles and miles until now. This is one of my projects with my friends and Rotary Clubs. We give water to other people and add a means to help uh, people. This is my favorite picture. Working hard, but somehow they still, you know, see the smile there, enjoying life. So shall we make a lot of money and be happy or they don't have money, but they're happy, you know? Ah, this is my, my favorite picture also, taken by my wife. Uh, this is an example with living without water. This boy is scratching their heads. No water, scratch, scratch, infection. That's what happened. On the right-hand side, same thing. Itchy, scratch, scratch, and what happened. Actually, the girl on the right-hand side, we cure her about six years ago. Only simply give... Vitamin E, vitamin D, ointments, and clean up every day. 
is uh, about close to six months gone. No? Uh, these are our activities during uh, the dry season. We give food to people who are living in the uh, remote areas. Not because we are having enough money to buy lots of rice, but we are blessed that we have been self-sufficient on rice since 2008 by planting our own rice. The illnesses is because of the airborne bacteria, of course. There's no water. And they share, or they must sometimes share the water with the animals. Yeah. The cleanliness, of course, sanitation is, hygiene is disturbed. It's my, one of my project, water, to, we give away uh, water to another orphanage, actually. Education is always the best, and that's our prime uh, core, uh, so-called so mission to be there. This is our first mobile library. We bring, if to those who are not able to come to our orphanage, to library, then we bring the books out. Inside the orphanage, yes, now we have 148 children, but outside the orphanage and 29 different villages, we are reaching out for 3,200 children. This is our second mobile library. Education is uh, very essential, very prime. This kind of trip is very, uh, very enjoyable, actually. We go to a village, we you know, stay with them, cook, eat with them. But if you are going to their villages, don't, don't you dare to eat from here and their utensils, knowing the hygiene, knowledge, or conditions there. It's, uh, might also, might, I might say gross, you know, it's no water. When they don't, they're having a big one, no water, you know who clean up their bottom? Their feces eaten by maybe the wild boar. But who clean up the bottom? Their dogs, until now. This is our library. We have about uh, around 5,000 titles. And actually, this library needs to be enlarged. It's too small now. So my next project is maybe enlarging the library. We have been visited by so many people from overseas, ambassadors, uh, diplomats. But until now, not our own people. I mean, <laughs> hiring officials may be allergic to come to our place. <laughs> this is one of uh, our happiness. This boy, quite diligently visiting the orphanage and reading. And this guy accepted uh, medical school at that time. And that's his graduation. <laughs> that's what he is now. Our orphanage children. They're volunteering. This uh, all Singapore Alliance crew and many uh, people from all over the world. Uh, average, we have about 30 or 35 countries, uh, uh, people from 35 countries volunteering at us uh, annually. Give us, uh, uh, well, when you're coming, let's say we're coming, children needs to be enriched their knowledge and love. With the love and enrichment comes together, they can go up to rock to proof. The progress will be very good. This is 2007, the turning point of what we are. From uh, That time I was coming back from New York, very tired, make my way to the orphanage, total about close to 40, 41 hours. When I arrived there, I'm very happy to see the children happy, healthy, bubbly, what comes in my mind, cross it, wow, oh, good, they're happy, lovely. But how about if one day I'm suddenly not working, sick, or I'm gone? 
how are we going to continuously supporting them? We have a property that cannot grow, but it's a parent land, cannot grow, grow anything, and very uh, harsh kind of plants. And the thorn can be as long as seven centimeters. But we committed. We can't do it. We can't do it. Clear up the land. We start our gambling by means of buying two generators and two, uh, one generator and two pumps, trying to find water for whoever, whatever we can plant, you know, to, to help us. It's a miracle. Three days after drilling manually, because I cannot afford drilling uh, with machine, it was $6,000 at that time, we drill manually. 24 meters, my wife called me, I was in Los Angeles, and hey honey, we've done it three days, three nights here, 24 meters, no water, but the soil is very moist, so it's nothing to lose. Continue. And the fourth day, miracle happened, that we are blessed that we don't need any generator, we don't need any pumps, because we are blessed with artesian water, come out by itself, since 2007 until now. Small flow of water, but we manage it in such. So uh, we clean up, clear up the, the, the it's my wife, also everybody doing it, and uh, that's my sports. We want to do sports, and uh, we do it together as family. We plan things together, and it's transform land. Mm. 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 And since 2008, April, we declare ourselves self sufficient on rice. How much rice are we consuming now? Every day, we're consuming now is between. Uh, now with the lesser children, I think it's about at least 50 kilograms a day. Can you multiply? <laughs> yes, it's our happiest moment when we did our harvest. You know? No matter who you are, what you are, what status you are, if you are part of family of Roslyn, everybody is doing uh, their part. You know? This is a doctor, and this three, uh, she's studying... Uh, uh, Computer science, next year graduating. She's doing agriculture. Her GPA was uh, 3.76. And the, the last one is, uh, is, is high school just going to university that time. So if you give opportunity, they can. Just give opportunity, continuously nurturing them. They can be a polished diamond. She is, or she was at that time, uh, High school uh, from uh, Edmonton, the interior part of Canada. Yeah? She and the mom came to us as part of the school curriculum, uh, uh, volunteering. They must do uh, what is it, social work, is it? Social work? Part of the school. So she is fantastic. She was fantastic, helping us day to day for one month. You know, coming from whole country, well, first day is really uh, very hot over there, so, so, but she's not deterred with the, uh, the weather. She's working very hard, so because of her doing activities so good, so I give so-called recognition on a certificate. She's outstanding, blah, 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 done, went home. She wanted to enter Hartford. She uh, signed up quite early, actually, she told me. And then uh, one day she was called by the university. Said that, actually, we like your uh, CV. Your grades are great, are good, but a lot more people better than yours. So she kind of being pushed down. Okay. So 
the university asks her, is there anything else that you are doing extra in your school so I can you know, leverage on it and I can use it as to legitimize that you will be accepted one of us. You know? So I, academically, I have nothing, but I only have this. I'm not sure it's a, this certificate. Is healthy. But the source certificate, okay, you're in. So that's why she's in the university. <laughs> and a few months ago, I have an email from her ex-school, eight girls, wanted to come. <laughs> but right in front, we want to do, we will do best, blah, 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 but please give us certificates. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not genuine, eh? it's not genuine. <laughs> she was genuine. Oh, that was very good. Until now, my message to the orphanage children, do your best and must compete. They must compete to give. Because by giving, positive energy will come to you and things will be escalating in a bigger way. See them? We're giving them. <laughs> School is mandatory for every child. And that's the most precious gift you can give. We create a, an education center. I will donate 10 hectares for education center. I already put it in place there. Uh, we are planning to, I don't know, God willing, who knows, we can build an elementary school. And uh, maybe it's not going to happen in my lifetime, but who knows? I'll do my best. We with it, do it within our means. Eh? And uh, these 43 hectares, I want to create, uh, we want to create a eco farming, eco village after our trial for one year plus at uh, one hectare of land, we want to make it bigger. So I want to have a place where people can do farming, can do uh, farming plants and animals, and sports activities, and boarding house for the children, about 1,000 children, school is sent into school, and while they are not in school doing or are doing any academic activities, they will be working with us together at the farms and plants and animals, and whatever we produce is to finance the activity itself. So beyond my time, hopefully the place will be forever blessings to so many people. We transform that. And we've done it. And for that reason, I was asked by NTU. We came last uh, December. My wife, myself, my three children, they asked me to do presentation. And before I finished, they said, hey, stop, stop, stop. Oh, what have I done wrong? Oh, nothing. Let's do it now. What do you mean? So, NTU, Nanyang, Technical University, and us, Russian Orphanage, we have signed MOU to work together for the next 30 years. <laughs> we can purchase things, even though the place is rocks, can be transformed if you're willing to do it. A respected blessing. I was in LA just arriving. As I checked in at the hotel and went to my room, phone call went. Captain Suhadi? Yes? This is CNN. Ah, yeah. I thought it's my friend. Ah, yeah, I'm tired. Lah. So, <laughs> give me your number. I'll call you later. So, shower, I call. You know, the other side, CNN New York. Excuse me. <laughs> That's how I found out that CNN actually approaching us, approached us that time. And from there, that's. Uh, the award is given to us. This is another one we have in uh, Singapore. You know my uh, competition competitor at that time during this event? CEO of telecom, CEO of Bertenaga uh, here, electricity, CEO of Samsung, CEO of uh, LG. <laughs> and I don't understand why that I got the one. <laughs> <laughs> This is the essence of the whole thing for, for our children. We have to be able to make them to dream big. As big as possible. And to start is always small. Start small. But do it fast.
Don't delay. Don't waste time. Make the first move, even though very little one. Look for the opportunities. What, you know, uh, if you want, let's say you're a student, you want to be a doctor, or you want to do that, you may, mean, means you have to be good in math, then learn your math one hour extra or something like that. No? No need to be studying the whole thing at once. Study bit by bit accordingly with your passion that you're having. And everything, it means it will be, you will be closer to destination. Every day, one inch, one inch, and at no time, you saw the diagram which is given to Chris, is it? Why? How can I do it? I can do it, and finally, I did it. Remember the slide yesterday? Yeah, that's the essence in life on how to achieve things. Hey, let's do it. <laughs> Together is our strength. Yes, indeed. Uh, in life, we cannot live alone. We need other people. That is why. Be who you are, the best you can be. Respect others, because they are the same as you are. And if you have a good networking, there's nothing impossible. Recently, we just did, um, we had just in another area, or swamp area, together with my Rotary Club friends and Rotary members of other places of the world, we uh, transform a swamp into rice fields. We spent $95,000, but on the first harvest, we have 900 tons. And three days ago, we committed to do the second part and looking forward for 1.4, 1.5 tons for the next one in nine months from now. So again, we cannot live alone. We need each other, we need other people. And when we are standing together, at same level, working together, at no time, this world will be very, very nice place to live on. Thank you. <laughs>